God bless you. Thank you for being with us today. We are Abundant Grace Church. I'm Bishop Ramon Di Maria. I'm the pastor of Abundant Grace Church. And truly, this is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall all rejoice and be glad in it. Praise God for each and every one of you being here today with us to celebrate this day in honor of our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ. Today we will continue with our message series titled, Sliding to Destruction and Damnation. This will be part two, and our main scripture today will be the book of Proverbs, chapter 4, and verse 19 which reads firstly from the King James Version, The way of the wicked is as darkness. They know not at what they stumble. Now the Good News Bible renders it. The road of the wicked, however, is dark as night. They fall, but cannot see what they have stumbled over. You know how it is to walk in darkness, right? Walk into a dark room where there's no light, or walk out in the woods, we'll say. You can't see anything. You trip, you fall. That's the same thing. That's what is being referred to here. But over here, it's talking about the way of the wicked, because they shun the light, and the light is Jesus Christ. So they shun Jesus Christ, or the things of God. Understand this, that many people are traveling down the wrong road of life. And the road that they are on leads to a cliff. And the only way to get off that cliff is to go backwards or jump. So what we are saying is that many people choose hell instead of heaven. So when you jump off the cliff, you are jumping into the fire, and the fire is the lake of fire, which burns for all eternity. But the one thing to be considered before you make any move is that Jesus wants to be your lifeline, and he is there. It's like he'll throw you a life preserver. When you look at a movie or you are in the presence of a house fire, when a fireman goes in, he has a lifeline attached to him. So if anything happens, they can pull him out again. This is what it is. But you have to have that lifeline. Some people are stubborn, as our verse refers to, and they stumble because, oh, that's okay, I'll make it, no problem. I don't need a lifeline. I don't need you, Jesus. And they go in unawares of the trap that is being set for them. So without the lifeline or the inner tube, if you're in the water, you will not have a path to safety. You have to depend upon yourself. And when your ego is higher than your humility, you perish. So today we will open up with Proverbs chapter 14 and verse 12, which reads as follows from the King James Version, There is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. The International Standard Version renders it, There is a pathway that seems right to a man, but in the end it's a road to death. There are ways that lead to death. Each of us has come in contact with people who prematurely have left this life by recklessness, by drinking, by yielding to the, the flesh, by committing crimes. They have taken a different path than a path of righteousness. And they have lost their life, a life that they could have been increased with. They could have had good health. They could have had a long living life. But they chose a different road to travel down. And no matter how you die, it must be considered that what is the state of your soul at the time of death. Many people have abused themselves and at the end have accepted Christ as their Savior and Lord and went to heaven when they perished and they couldn't reverse their illness or sickness but they did have a bedside confession, let's just say, let's use that term, and they accepted Jesus Christ and therefore when they, their body died, the soul lived forever with Jesus Christ. Well, your soul's going to live forever either with Christ or in hell, either one, in heaven or hell. We have a problem in this life that there is no reality of eternity. It's like nothing comes to an end. If I do this wrong thing, it doesn't mean anything because I still have a lot of years left to live. I can speed down a highway at 120 miles an hour. Nothing's going to happen. I'm invincible. I can drink all I want. Nothing's going to happen to me because I'm going to see retirement and I'm going to live to be 90 or 100 years old like my grandparents or someone else that, that you know, a good friend. If they can live that long, I can live that long and have a good time. False. Not one day or another day, not even a second or an hour in the future is guaranteed to anybody. That is why we must be ready, as they say, to meet your maker. You must be ready to stand before God. And you're either going to hear, come on in, or depart. So what you do, the decisions you make in this life, are directly proportional to where you will spend eternity. You know, in every human life, there are solemn hours when we think about eternity. 
for some people, that hours or this time, or it's like, especially like at a funeral, they might think about eternity for a moment. Then when they walk out of the funeral, it's a different thought process, right? It's like being in a place and you're watching the game, you're all excited, and after your team loses, you walk out and you just, that's it, they lost, forget it. And that's the way people are. Sometimes they go to church, they they go to a funeral, to visit somebody sick, and their, their solemnness is temporary. It's, it's temporary, and they only hold it temporarily within their, their spirit, within their mind, and then they go back to their own usual way. Or if somebody dies, they're so broken up, but then a few days later, they just go on with a moment. Everybody goes back to work. Everybody goes on to try to exist like they were before. And as things go down the road, you know, that, that's why you look, if you walk through a cemetery, which we did recently, you see some people's graves that they're just in shambles. Everything's warm. Nobody takes care of it. Nobody visits the graves. You know, maybe the first year or so they did visit after the person died. They went like on Mother's Day or Father's Day or Veterans Day. And then after that, nobody visits them anymore. The memory is, is gone and, and sometimes they may hear, oh, or hear something and then they'll come up with or see a picture and then they'll say, oh, yes, oh, I remember Grandpa, I remember Grandma, I remember Uncle Joe, I remember Aunt So-and-so. And then the younger generations will say, who was that? Then you tell them, oh, that was your great uncle, great aunt. Oh, yeah, look at them old pictures. Huh, how about that? And that's it. It's gone into eternity, into eternity past because the people will never come back. And we are geared to continue to move forward. And people move forward and they forget the good times that they had in the past. They forget the memories that they had in the past and they go on to what they think are greater things in this life, which the majority of the times they lead to eternal death, okay? Because what they do is out of the will of God. I like this scripture here. I want to read from Proverbs chapter 12, and verse 15. It reads as follows from the King James Version, and this is one of the most important Proverbs that we could even read, okay? The weight of a fool is right in his own eyes, but he that hearkeneth unto counsel is wise. The good news Bible read is that a stubborn fool considers his own way the right one, but a person who listens to advice is wise. How many times do we see in our lives where our parents try to warn us, don't do this and don't do that. I know better. Uh, why should I listen to that old person? They're, they're outdated. They're antique. They don't understand this life. They don't understand this. They don't understand that. And they end up, what, getting in trouble. They end up having a disastrous life because they let pride overrule them. They let selfishness overrule them, which comes, which is in the same area of pride because they put me first. I, me, I, 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 instead of someone else. Instead of, the, uh, instead of considering the feelings of others or the works of others, they put themselves first. And this is why... It says the way of a fool is right in his own eyes. You can't tell me what to do. Look, uh, I have a college education. Don't tell me what to do. You're outdated. Uh, you don't understand this, this present life. You don't know what's right from wrong. You don't know what's good for me. How can you tell me what's good for me? What's wrong for me? They call these people fools. And these, what we call fools, live a life of open profaneness, self-righteousness, because they think that they're better than someone else. They can do it better than anyone else, which they don't take advice. So it says in the, a group of counselors, there is much wisdom. What president doesn't ask his chief of staff, military chief of staff, and the generals what he thinks? What's the pros and cons of doing this thing? We all have to do that. We all have to seek the counsel of godly people as Christians. And then we weigh everything out. And then we make our decisions. Yeah. Proverbs chapter 4 and 19 says, The weight of the wicked is as darkness. They know not at what they stumble. And of course we read that earlier. That's from the King James Version, but I'll read it again. The good news Bible renders it. The road of the wicked, however, is dark as night. They fall, but cannot see. They have stumbled, or what they have stumbled over, or in what mess they have stumbled into. What we're talking about here, my beloved, is not just walking down a path in the woods. We're talking about a life of sin. Where today's society, if it feels good, it looks good, it must be good. I always give the analogy of someone bringing you a bag of groceries. You say, oh, thank you. Oh, this looks good. This is, oh, thank you. Or two or three bags. Oh, look, I got all these bags. Then you look at it. It's full of candy or junk food. Nothing with substance to, 
to help you physically, to put the vitamins back in your body. And that's the way some people do. They, they don't look at the consequences. They don't measure the pros and the cons of the situation. And they jump right into it. Oh, well, if you're my true friend, you'll come with me to hold up this bank. If you're, if you're my friend, and then we'll go out and we'll have a good time. Like, there won't be any opposition. They won't get shot. Nothing will happen. It's just, hey, somebody, the bank is just going to give you the money. There's no punishment. They, they think there's no punishment because they're raised in society where anything goes. Well, you first. If you want it, go get it. Right? You can have whatever you want. Just go get it. Just take it. You know, uh, just steal from the rich and give it to the poor. Attitude, too. It doesn't work that way. If you don't work, you don't eat. Don't steal. Don't rob. Don't hurt anybody. But we forget the commandments and the challenges. And we feel like, well, there's always tomorrow. Uh, it's, everything's going to be okay. Uh, live life freely when you don't consider the consequences of their deeds, of their letting their anxieties overtake them, letting their hunger for lust overrule them. They want to live a life, an unquestionable life, and do whatever they want to do without any repercussions. And that's what we deal with. Sin has a price. It brings darkness, ruin, and misery to those that live in the state of darkness. And a lot of them don't know what they are stumbling over because they have been blinded by Satan. Satan uses their emotions to control them. But Satan can only do what you allow him to do. But they don't know that. Some people fear Satan more than they do God. It's a shame. When God is the only one, he is the supreme power yeah. that can throw you in hell tomorrow if he wanted to. Satan can't put you in hell. You have to choose to go to hell, to live a life of sin. Amazing, isn't it? In Matthew chapter 15 and verse 14, 14 says, Jesus said, these are the words in red, very important. Let them alone. They are blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into the ditch. Now the Goodies Bible writer said, don't worry about them. They are blind leaders of the blind. And when one blind man leads another, both of them fall into a ditch. That's why we must always follow the light. Those that follow darkness lead others in the same path of darkness. When we see people thriving off of taking advantage of other people, taking advantage of the poor. They think they're doing right or stealing from somebody or committing adultery or breaking any of the commandments. And you confront them and you say, that's not right. That's not right. They just walk away from you and they, they will go and find someone else that will agree with their sinfulness, with their lifestyle. Jesus says, leave them alone. Let them go. Let them go. Let God judge them. Let go and let God judge them. Okay? In Luke chapter 6, verse 39, we read in the Good News Bible, And Jesus told them this parable. One blind man cannot lead another one. If he does, both will fall into a ditch. Which means that you may agree with somebody to commit a crime. You may do it because of friendship to someone. You may do it because you have lost all sense of hope in your life. But know that a person in darkness cannot lead you into the light. A person in darkness will only lead you into darkness. Unless there is a soul-changing event take place, which means they come out of darkness into the marvelous light through Jesus Christ, they will never lead anybody in the right direction. So that was uh, Luke chapter 6 and verse 39. In closing, I'm going to go to 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 13. We know that whatever you allow to master your life, that will be your master. It's like wherever you choose to work, what company, that's the one that you will be submissive to. And you must obey all of their rules or you won't have any peace on your job. So if you choose to follow Satan and you try to turn away from him, he will dog you the rest of your life. When you go to Christ and you turn your life to Christ and come out of darkness, Christ will love you the rest of your life and lead you in the right direction. So, 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 13 reads from the God's Word version, But evil people and phony preachers will go from bad to worse as they mislead people and are themselves misled. Let me tell you something. We live in a society where instead of faithfulness and righteousness, finances have driven people. They have taken their mind off of the main function of the church, which is to lead people to eternal life, to lead people to God through Jesus Christ. They have preached a gospel of prosperity instead of a gospel of faith and love toward God, of dedication to their creator, 
They have twisted the word of God to say what they want it to say. And there are evil people that use scripture. Now how, how can I make that statement easy? Because Satan came to Christ and he did the same thing. The Pharisees came to Christ and did the same thing. It's like when I was on jury duty. Some of the questions that they asked me before they chose me was, if you see a police officer come in with a uniform and give a testimony, does that mean that he's telling the truth? If it looks good, that doesn't mean it's good for you. Like that bag of groceries, right? Full of junk food. The outer appearance doesn't mean that there's anything good on the inside. We always have to remember that when we make decisions in life. How will it benefit the kingdom of God? How will it benefit your testimony for Jesus Christ? If it won't, run away from it as fast as you can. Remember, the world cannot satisfy your soul. Only Jesus can. Only Jesus can satisfy your soul. You can search the whole world over and never find the peace that comes through Jesus Christ. I beloved, if the church that you are in doesn't preach Jesus Christ and crucified the only way to heaven, you're in the wrong church. They're preaching false doctrine. If they tell you that it's okay to sin, they're preaching false doctrine. If they're preaching, take revenge or get whatever you want because it belongs to you, run, run. People say there's only one thing free in this life, that's death. No, it's not. It's expensive to die. More expensive to die than it is to be born. Jesus gives you the free gift of life, but it wasn't free. It cost him. It cost the father the life of his son. There was a price to pay. There, there was a price to pay for our sins because Jesus was sinless. But he went as a lamb to the slaughter and he gave his life for us. Now, not just to, for us, but for every sinner in the world. So there are many who are sliding into the final abode. The final abode is a lake of fire and brimstone. So in other words, they're sliding to destruction and damnation. And unless they repent and turn to Jesus Christ, they will be in the lake of fire for eternity. That's why I want to afford you the opportunity to receive Christ as your Savior and Lord. If you'd like to receive Christ as your Savior and Lord, there's something that you must do. You must repent and ask God to forgive you through Jesus Christ. And when you repent, you shall be saved. If you want to do that today, please pray this prayer with me and meet it from your heart. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, I come before you as a sinner. I heard the message today, sliding to destruction and damnation. It has touched my heart. And I know that if I died today, I wouldn't go to heaven, but I would go to hell. I'm sorry for my sins. I'm sorry for neglecting you as my Savior and Lord. And I ask you to forgive me my sins and cleanse me of all unrighteousness. I want to go to heaven when I die. I don't want to go to hell. So please forgive me. I believe that through my repentance today that I have received eternal life. In Jesus' name I pray and thank you. Amen. My beloved, if you said that prayer today and meant it from your heart, let me be the first to welcome you into the kingdom of God. Now what I want you to do is firstly go to a Bible preaching teaching church, get an audience with a pastor or one of the staff elders, tell them what happened, ask them to anoint you with oil, to pray with you, to pray for you, and to baptize you by full immersion in water in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And if you don't have a Bible, ask them to give you a Bible. And then what else I want you to do is contact me at abundant.grace at att.net and tell me what happened. You can also contact me through our website at www.abundantgracechurch.net or through our other website, www.abundantgraceofmidlothian.com. Midlothian is spelled M-I-D-L-O-T-H-I-A-N. If you want to know about our ministry, just Google me, Bishop Ramon D. Maria, or Abundant Grace Church. Thank you for being with us today. We are Abundant Grace Church. I'm Bishop Ramon D. Maria. I'm the pastor of Abundant Grace Church. And our message today has been part two of sliding to destruction and damnation. My beloved, there is a way that seems right to a fool. And it seems right in their own eyes. But the road that they are on leads to destruction. God bless you, my beloved. And please keep watching.